Now we're going to look at the problem of distribution of molecules in an ideal gas. Let's assume that we have capital N molecules inside an isolated container. There is a subvolume V and subvolume B prime such that the total volume is B0. I call N the number of molecules in the subvolume V. And I call N prime the number of molecules in the subvolume V prime so that the total number of molecules N plus N prime is capital N. And I have this system at equilibrium and you can recall that at equilibrium we are going to have the most uniform distribution, random distribution of molecules. And given that this is an isolated system, uh, we don't have energy exchange with the environment. Uh, the probability P is probability of a molecule uh, being in subvolume V. Uh, then therefore Q is the probability of a molecule being in subvolume V prime. And there are only two possibilities. It's either in V or V prime. So P plus Q must be equal to one. And because I have the uniform distribution uh, at equilibrium, P has to be equal to V divided by V zero. And Q has to be equal to V prime divided by V zero. Once again, if you check P plus Q, V divided by V0 plus V prime divided by V0 is V0 over V0, which is 1. So it makes sense. Now I'm going to uh, form an analogy between this problem and the ideal spin system problem. And in the ideal spin system problem, I had a number, total magnetic moment number M. So I'm going to define for this problem a number m as the difference between the numbers of molecules in subvolume b and subvolume v prime and this is going to give me for n prime n minus m and therefore since i have n plus n prime is equal to capital n total number of molecules uh, this is going to imply n plus n minus m is equal to capital N or uh, 2n minus m is equal to capital N. In other words, n must be equal to 1 over 2 capital N plus m. Um, now, if I want to know what is n bar, the average number of molecules in subvolume V, I can use this relationship. So I have found the connection between M and N. So I can use this relationship uh, to get. Uh, so for the mean value of N bar, ensemble average of N bar, I have 1 over 2 N plus M bar because the ensemble average of uh, N, capital N, is just capital N. Okay, so I can recall ensemble average of M in the ideal spin system. Okay, so here I have M bar in the ideal spin system was given as N, capital N, the number of spins times P minus Q. Uh, this is from ideal spin system and I have a completely analogous situation here therefore for n bar I would have 
1 over 2 n plus n p minus q and this is going to give me 1 over 2 capital N 1 plus p minus q which is 1 over 2 capital N p plus q plus p minus q minus q and plus q will cancel and I will have as a result uh, for n bar n bar is equal to 1 over 2 times 2p times n n capital N p so that's the average number of molecules in subvolume B at equilibrium and similarly now I'm going to consider uh, delta n the deviation of n from its average value that's by definition n minus n bar so this is going to be equal to 1 over 2 n plus m minus 1 over 2 n plus m bar so therefore this is just equal to 1 over 2 n's will cancel 1 over 2 m minus m bar so that means uh, delta n the deviation of the number of molecules in subvolume b from the average value is 1 over 2 delta m and if i take this one step further if i take the square of delta n i would have 1 over 4 delta m squared and then if i take the average delta n square bar this would be equal to 1 over 4 delta m square bar and then if I take it in a, in another step uh, to find the standard deviation of n this is going to be equal to 1 over 2 standard deviation of m okay so now I can recall from the ideal spin system uh, what the variance of m was it was equal to 4 npq or uh, the standard deviation of m was 2 square root npq this is from ideal spin system so using this analogy here i can say that the variance of delta n delta n square bar will be equal to 1 over 4 times 4 npq so I will have for the variance of n or dispersion of n, n, p, q. And similarly, I can take it again one step further. Uh, the standard deviation of n, which is the root mean square, square root of the average of delta n square root mean square uh, this is going to be equal to uh, square root of npq so now i know the ensemble average and the standard deviation of n so that means most n values will be in the range n bar which is capital n times p what is p capital n times v over uh, v0 plus or minus square root n p q square root n v v prime divided by v0 squared or if you wish i can write this as n capital N V over V0 plus or minus uh, 1 over V0 square root N square root V V prime or V0 minus V so this would be the range in which I would find most N values and what is the uh, 
magnitude of the fluctuations, relative magnitude of the fluctuations, then I can write the ratio of the standard deviation to the average value is square root NPQ divided by uh, capital NP. This will give me 1 over square root N. Um, and then I will have here uh, PQ to the 1 half P square to the power 1 half. So the magnitude of the relative magnitude of the fluctuations will be equal to 1 over square root n q over p to the power 1 half. And if you wish we can evaluate this, this would be equal to uh, 1 over square root n v prime over uh, v0 to v over v0 v prime over v to the power one half so if i have v the sub volume half of the total volume v0 over 2 then i would have p and q equal to 1 over 2 and the average value of the number of molecules in the sub-volume V would be capital N over 2 and in that case the relative magnitude of the fluctuations would be uh, 1 over square root N. So I would have most N values in the range N over 2 plus or minus um, let's see uh, what would happen to delta n here it's square root npq so it is 1 over 2 square root n so if i substitute for p and q 1 over 2 i would get 1 over 4 square root would give me 1 over 2 so n over 2 plus or minus 1 over 2 square root n would be the range in which i would find most of the molecules so this problem has shown me that uh, by taking the ideal spin system as a model, I can solve similar problems knowing the solution to this problem. Uh, basically, in this case, we consider distribution of molecules in an ideal gas at equilibrium. We had a total volume V0 of an isolated container. We considered a subvolume V with n molecules inside, subvolume V prime with n prime molecules inside. The total number of molecules capital N. At equilibrium we have the uniform distribution so simply the probability of having a molecule inside a subvolume V is the ratio of that volume to the total volume. By defining the difference between the number of molecules in subvolume V and V prime I have formed a connection between the total moment uh, number in the ideal spin system problem and uh, this problem, the difference in the number of gas molecules, and I have found that by using m bar equals capital N p minus q in the ideal spin system, if you recall, p was the number, the probability of having an upspin, and q was the probability of having a downspin, which is analogous to having a molecule in volume V and having a molecule in volume V prime. Uh, I have substituted for n bar and p minus q and verified that the average number of molecules in the subvolume V should be capital N times p, which is capital N times V over V0. And then I considered the deviation from the average value n minus n bar using the relationship with capital with m. I have found that the deviation of n is one half the deviation of m, so uh, that basically tells me the standard deviation of n is standard deviation of m times 1 over 2. So by using what I have found out in the ideal spin system, 2 square root npq for standard deviation of m, I have calculated standard deviation of n to be square root capital NPQ. 
and then by taking the ratio of the uh, standard deviation to the average value I get the relative magnitude of fluctuations which is 1 over square root n q over p to the power 1 half and indeed if I evaluate my result for a v equals v0 over 2 that is left side and right side equal volumes I have the average number of molecules capital N over 2 and the relative magnitude of fluctuations is simply given by 1 over square root n.